Today's show is sponsored by the Airbnb Kickstart course. My wife and I started our first Airbnb here in the last year, and we've come to love the ability to earn more money than we would if we had a long-term rental. If you're interested in starting your Airbnb business with little money, scaling your Airbnb business, or just learning tricks about the industry in general, check out our Airbnb course at nextlevelincome.com slash Airbnb. That's A-I-R, the letters B-N-B, and you'll get a 20% discount code. On today's show, we have Laura Alamari. Laura is and has been a real estate investor for over 30 years. She now mentors new and experienced real estate investors nationwide. Laura has experience in all aspects of residential real estate investing, from wholesaling to buy and hold, fix and flip, as well as raising private money. From acquisition to disposition of the pro properties, she has a team of investors and partners with a proven track record who can do it all. Welcome to the Next Level Income Show, where it's our goal to raise your income, investments, and life to the next level with your host, Chris Larson. Get your free copy of his book at nextlevelincome.com forward slash book. Also, if you're an accredited investor, check out the invest link to learn how to gain access to institutional quality real estate opportunities. Laura, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me today. Absolutely. It's my pleasure. And um, I, I had a great time being on your podcast. We shared a lot of similarities in our, um, like our real estate journey, yet we have very different backgrounds. I'd love for you to share your background and some of your history with the audience here. Sure. Well, first of all, I'm sure you will notice my accent. I actually grew up in Italy and uh, I came to United States in 1985. And uh, it took me about two years, only two years to realize that real estate for me was the way to go. I was actually in Hawaii at the time, and my husband was in the army, and uh, I saw what real estate was doing back in the 80s, the end of the 80s, and Hawaii was totally boom. And uh, I said, I want to be in that. I was looking for something part-time to pay for college, and uh, that seemed the way to go. And then I caught real estate bug, and that's what I've been doing since, so it's 35 years now. But I started actually as a real estate broker in Hawaii. And then uh, when I moved to England in 91, I got into investments. Awesome. And yeah, that is that is a very high level overview of your story. And there's a lot I want to kind of kind of pick up through that part. Sure. Um, you now you so you started as a broker, but then you you started investing on a part time basis. And now, you know, one of the big things you do is you teach other people how to do the same thing. Um, I, sure. I did the same. I was, I was working, I was, you know, managing real estate part-time. Tell us about your first deal and how that came to be. Yeah. Well, while I was in Hawaii, um, I was uh, reading up about real estate investing. I was intrigued and interested in getting into the investment and I picked up some books. I remember one of them was Robert Allen, uh, yep. no yep. money down. And then I saw an infomercial uh, with carton sheets. And I bought this course, you know, that was $150. I remember that and I thought that was a lot. And uh, I studied that, I devoured the information. So when I moved then to the mainland, I saw that was my prime opportunity. I moved into the Midwest and uh, we lived about two hours away from the major metro, any major city. And so I wanted to build a rental portfolio. I wanted residual income. I had a two small children at the time, a two year old and a few month old baby. And I wanted to build a residual income because so I didn't have to find a job. And uh, so I started investing from, uh, you know, two hours away, started investing into the main metropolitan area, which was St. Louis at the time. And then I also went back to college. So here I'm raising two children, investing for time. And then I went to back my MBA. Uh, so that's where I started. And my goal was to accrue a $5,000 residual income every month from rental. So that says that would be enough for me to afford the lifestyle with my children that I wanted without going back to work. Well, I well surpassed that. I, my goal is 5000 in a year. In about 18 months, I actually had reached 10000 in residual income. That is awesome. That is awesome. Um, I read Robert, I think the I think I had Robert Allen's no, Nothing Down for the 90s. He came out with oh, like yes. that, the, the second version, had Carlton Sheets course. Um, were you using those strategies, Laura, to pick up these properties? Were they resident? Were they all residential properties? I, the, the Carlton Sheets, I remember about 
much about Robert Allen, but I'm sure I picked up a lot from his as well. But I remember the, the biggest thing for me was cartoon sheets. And it was kind of funny because I bought this in 1991 and obviously I lost the uh, course for the ages. But a couple of years ago, I went and bought a tape on eBay because there was a VHS tape that really resonated with me. And it was, when you opened up the big box, it was at the top, it called Quick Start. And it was yellow that tape. big plastic box that looked like a book, right? Yeah. Correct. Yeah. yeah. But there was a VHS tape, which I still have because I bought it two years ago. eBay, And it says quick start. And so I bought the tape. And I remember two years ago, my husband said, do we even have a VCR? I was like, yeah, we do. We do in the garage. So I went to get it. And uh, uh, we were, I listened to it. And what really got me, I think, is that his strategy was really simple but very, uh, it was a genius. So basically you show, it shows him sitting at the kitchen table, you know, with one of those big phone, phone with a long cord that come from the wall in the kitchen, <laughs> sitting there and getting the Sunday paper and circling everything in the Sunday paper that was for rent or for sale by owner. And then he would call these people and he shows him, him calling people and he would say, well, I see that you have your house for rent at, such an address, and he would say, you think you might consider to sell this house in the future? Okay, simple as that. And, you know, it shows him the tape, it shows him the conversation. So I was like, hmm. So I said, what do I have to do, right? I started doing the same thing. So I'm just sending paper, circling, and I start calling. And uh, well, basically he was doing lease option to buy, right? So he was doing a lease option, and he was doing a, um, a sandwich lease, right? And then he was doing some contract for deeds and he was doing a subject to, you know, all this that he, but he was keeping it really simple. He never, he never mentioned these big words. He always yeah. said, you know, and so he was having these conversations and then he was him driving his old big cat. I don't know. I think it was a Lincoln town car or something. Uh, it shows him going to the properties and looking at the property and information, having his conversation with the seller. So the whole tape was about him doing this. And, uh, and that's how I started doing it myself. I started doing so. But one of the things that happens as you start having these conversations, as you go out there and conversing, as you go out in the field and start looking at things, one thing schools another. So I started doing owner financing, lease options. I started buying some REOs uh, from smaller banks, local banks. So one thing pulled to another, 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 and that's how I built up the business. So that was actually the most important tape of the whole course for me. And now everybody that. here is going to go get the 99 cents tape right. from, <laughs> from eBay. <laughs> no, hard bar won't be finding the tape. It'll be finding the right? VHS right? player. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. No, I love it. So how many properties did it take you to build up 10,000 a month? Um, I have uh, over 40 doors, uh, wow, meaning awesome. multi-families mainly. Yeah. I had, I think, one or two single, but most of them were two, four, six, and eight units. Um, so that's how it, it did. Yeah. And all of them were done with creative financing. I love that. So, yeah, if, if you know, if you're interested, like lease options, you know, these these wrap leases where or you, you call it a sandwich lease. Um, I think a lot of this, this creative financing people have forgotten about, you know, investors call me, Laura, and they say, oh, you know, I, I want to, I'm going to go buy a rental today. And I'm like, well, how much is it going to cash flow? Oh, $500 a month before expenses, which, you know, it doesn't, they're not really making any money. Right. Do you think, do you think these strategies can still make money today? What are your, what are your opinions on the strategies? Today? Oh, definitely. I have yeah. students right now that still do that. I have one student actually right now she has over 50 Airbnbs. Uh, she does a lot of arbitrage uh, with Airbnb and short-term rentals. Actually, she's teaching. I, I hired her to teach to the other students to how she does that. I had another one. She bought 21 houses in 11 months using strategies. So yes, they do work now as well. No, and I love that. That's one of my favorite strategies um, is, is short-term rentals today. The margins are so much bigger. My wife and I have two here in Asheville, North Carolina. And if anybody's been listening to the podcast at all, they've, they've heard me talk about it. Um, are you seeing the same thing in short-term rentals versus long-term rentals? Um, yes, yes, definitely. Actually, she has a rentals in Greenville, which I believe is in North oh, Carolina. Yeah, right? that's, yeah, that's like 
an hour away from us right here. Yeah, that's so that's what Love most it. of our rentals are. And she also yeah. does fix and flips there. But yeah, no, I still see that being very, works for both of them. And so, so yes, having this conversation, you know, and I like when, that, when we deal even because we do fix and flip and wholesaling as well. And so when you, a lot of you come across the seller, I'm sure a lot of you do, they say, oh yeah, well, I, you know, if I don't get my price right now, I just keep renting, right? And so like, the time I come across that, yeah, if I don't get my price, which obviously they want market or more, right. um, I'm going to keep renting. And then I was like, great, so I rent from you and they take him back, right? So I say, like, okay, what are you talking about? Well, can I rent from you? And then maybe we can come with an agreement for me to buy in the future because I'm also interested in selling. Otherwise, we're going to have this conversation. So by doing it that way, now you can turn around and say, I'm going to rent a house from you. And you can do arbitrage, you can do a sandwich lease, you can do whatever you want, and then you buy from here a year or two down the road. But what's going to happen is when you do it that way, you can kind of, you know, come to an agreement now and block the price at the future value. So if you want a hundred thousand, and the market right now the property is a hundred thousand, well, you're not making any money today, but you can say to him, okay, I'll give you 110 two years from now. And then he's like, whoa, okay, the market's going to go up and down and she's still will, willing to give me 110. Now, my contracts are also built that we can renegotiate if there's a market fluctuation of more than 10%. But, you know, that's stuff that we have in the contract. But the thing is, yes, now you can turn something that says, well, I'm not interested in selling, discounting the price, but I want to rent. Now they become a owner financing. Yeah, I love it. I feel like, Laura, you know, so many people, you know, they it's like they have, you know, their one utensil and they're trying to figure out a way to make real estate, especially residential real estate work in today's market. And what you teach your students is more like a Swiss army knife. You have multiple right. different options. If, if one isn't a great fit, you're able to pivot and do that. So tell us a little bit about your coaching program, who you specialize in working with. And, you know, you've mentioned a lot of different strategies now, which I'm sure, you know, some listeners are a little bit glazed over. Maybe you can shed a little bit more light on that. Sure. Well, uh, mainly I deal, first of all, I deal only in residential. Okay. So I don't do any commercial. That's not my niche. Uh, residential up to four years is considered residential. And uh, we do anywhere from wholesaling, fix and flip and buy and hold. Now, personally, I'm actively with my daughter. We, I work with my daughter. We do wholesaling and fix and flips. Uh, mainly wholesaling, but they do cherry proper cherry pick properties to do fix and flips as well. The rent that I have are with a business partner. Most of our rentals have been paid for. So, you know, we start buying back in the 90s. Um, and so we do teach nationwide. The thing I also do is a private money, raising private money in syndication. So I have a lot of experience with that as well, which I exponentially grew my business when I started doing it. So with that said, uh, we do teach residential. Wholesaling seems to be a big one because I think honestly, a lot of the students that come to me or wanna be investors are really new beginners in the business. Um, I do, I would say the second one that come for us is buy and hold, especially rental and uh, Airbnbs. And then also there is a fix and flip, but we do teach in all of them. And uh, our strategies is mainly what works right now in the market. And they're very direct, very step-by-step. Um, we give you a straight path, you know, right now I'm going for the, what I call a quick wins challenge with students. So when I have a students that come to us new, we give them seven strategy, one every two weeks to put deals on the contract right away with marketing. And uh, right now we had a quick win strategies last week. And I have, I think altogether, we had over 50 contracts read wow. by all my students uh, in different things. So using a strategy that doesn't require any costing marketing, no cold calling, nothing like that. So we have a lot like that. It's, I call them quick wins. You don't make huge profits. I think the most profits they make is anywhere from $2,500 to $10,000 per deal. But still, right? You want to do one or two of those and you, yeah, every month, you on top of everything else. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. What are your favorite strategies today for, because investors call me, they're like, Hey, Chris, where would you start today? Like I'm, I'm looking to build my first 50,000 or a hundred thousand dollars. You know, what's your, what are your, some of your favorite strategies today, Laura? I love, I always love wholesaling with fix and flip. Um, like I said, I'm very selective with the fix and flips though. 
So I would say I love wholesaling. It's quick, it's easy. You can do it anywhere. You know, you can travel. Uh, some I do a lot because it's virtual. And, uh, and you don't need any money to start with. You know, my daughter, when she started seven years ago, she had no money whatsoever. She was looking for something on the side. And now she wholesales six to 10 properties a month. So wow. it's uh, anybody can do it. I mean, she was in her mid twenties when she started money. So, yeah. So do you mind for anyone that is just hearing wholesaling for the first time, do you mind articulating what that is? Sure. So you basically, one of the basic, one of the main thing you have to understand, because I know there is a lot of bad rap about wholesaling is that you are not selling properties. Okay. Uh, you are not an owner on the property. What you do is you come across an owner. Like I said, in the example earlier, you get an owner that you're willing to talk to. It gives you a contract either a sale contract or a lease option. You can do it with both. And then you're going to sell the contract to somebody else. You can assign the contract. You can assign the lease option. You can do it, what they call a double closing where you actually close, but you close on the contract. You're not closing and you're not selling the property. So when you go out there and market, you market a contract. I never say I'm marketing a property because that's not what I'm doing. I, I don't own the property. Uh, but that's what it is. So let's say the property is worth 120 and you get a property on the contract for 100,000, you know, and people say, why would the seller take 100 if the property is 120, especially in this market? Yeah. Don't second guess why people do things. It's not always about money. You know, people, a lot of time don't want to have to deal with having agents and they have tenants in the house. They don't want to have all this marketing, all these people coming through. They don't want to deal with all kinds of inspections. So there is a lot of reason why people people will take a lower offer. But so you put in a contract 100,000, now you're gonna find a buyer for 110, 115. Remember you're wholesaling, you buy low and sell low. So you have to still give a good deal to somebody and you make 10, $15,000. So as simple as that. Yeah, that's, I mean, and look, that's how, that was one of my strategies starting out. I have um, coaching clients that have used that. I have good friends here in Asheville that use that strategy. And it's, it's an amazing way for a stepping stone as you're building up capital. If you say, hey, like you said, I don't have a lot of money to get started. Where do I start? Um, right. I love that. Um, one of the other things I love about you, Laura, is you work with your daughter and my boys are 10 and 12. So I'm starting to teach them, you know, kind of like the family business. What are some tips that you have for people that are working with their family or trying to just teach their children some of these financial lessons that you've done such a great job teaching your daughter? Well, first of all, the, your children must want this because I have four children and she's the only one who has an interest. Uh, so okay. That said, you know, <laughs> don't try to force feed into somebody that, you know, so with her many years, she did not have any interest because she was born in the business. So I was in real estate when she was born back in 1989. So she's been, she grew up in it, but she never had an interest. She went to school for totally something else in the medical field. And then, but she, when she started uh, going through some things in her life and she was going through a divorce at 25 already, had a small child and she was looking for something else or supplement her income. And, uh, and so she became my assistant with real estate and all of a sudden hey, she started paying attention, right? She said, oh my gosh, she's making all this money. She has the freedom. Her students have the freedom. She says, I wanted that. So, but was her getting into it. So my other three children have no interest, not, none whatsoever. So it's, you have to really see what it is. I mean, you live by example, right? So they see you and they say, okay, I want to be like that. Or I want to follow in the footsteps, but you can't force anybody because at the end of the day, if they don't have the interest in that drive, they're not going to be successful. Absolutely. No, that's so important. Um, that's, uh, again, it's, it's awesome that you get to share that with your daughter here. Um, so, you know, one of the things that I've talked a lot about here recently is where we are in the real estate cycle. And I see a lot of similarities today with the millennials forming households as, as we saw back in the eighties, as you mentioned, mm -hmm. like the real estate market was on fire. The baby boomers were buying, um, uh, properties It really drove housing prices has drove the stock market up. And we've seen a lot of the similar, similar things today in this cycle, what do you think the future holds for real estate, Laura? Well, like you said, there are cycles, right? So, you know, I always say I've seen three different recessions over the years. And um, so we're going to have a slowdown and a setback. We're going to have adjustments. I don't 
that we're going to see the prices drop to pre-level of uh, what we had the last couple of years. I think we're going to adjust some parts of the country more than others. Um, you know, I think that this year we're still going to ride the wave pretty high. Um, appreciation is still going to be there, not the size last year, but we're still going to see a jump. And then I think in next year, you know, things are kind of going to slow down and adjust, which has to, because obviously, you know, the income for people to qualify for mortgage is not keeping up with this inflation that has been happening. So with that said, you know, right now is a prime time to really position yourself to go out there and make deals. And you can always make deals. That's the thing about real estate. You know, when one door closes, another one opens. When 2007 happened and everybody running for cover, well, there was so many opportunities in real estate. You know, I started doing a lot of short sales, you know, so the sudden I shifted gear and got into short sales and made a lot of money doing that. And so there are always opportunities there. People say, oh, it's too competitive. It's too this or too that. Well, it's all about a mindset. You know, it's all, if you see competition, there's going to be competition. I had a student here in Miami right now, which is probably one of the most competitive markets. She just made $80,000 on a wholesale deal in Miami. Okay. So it's not, don't think of that being competitive. It's what you believe. Don't tell yourself the story. And uh, the opportunities are there. And when the market changes, there are going to be different opportunities. And so, you can always make money with real estate. I've been in real estate for 35 years. And trust me, you know, this I've never been out of a job. <laughs> yeah. No, I think you're exactly right. I think, you know, just like if you're on the sports field and the defense changes, you have to be ready to change. If the offense changes, you have to be ready to change. You have to move with the market. And that's why I love the strategies that you teach your students, which, you know, you teach multiple different strategies that not only work today in different settings, but can also work in the future when that changes. So if people want to get in touch with you, Laura, if they want to learn from you, if they want to work with you and learn about some of these strategies that you get to teach your students, what's the best way to get in touch with you? Sure. Just check out my website uh, is lauraalameri.com. That's lauraalameri, A-L-A-M-E-R-Y.com. And uh, we do all kinds of training. We have master classes every month. We've been very successful. Uh, five-day master classes. We do at the beginning of every month. And then uh, we do a lot of training. We do a lot of events. We do live events. The next one is in Orlando next month in May. We do them three times a year. Um, it sounds by the airport. So we do training. And what I do is I bring a lot, uh, I bring a lot of my successful students in and they teach. I have them teach actually classes so that there will be uh, Don, it teaches about Airbnb and arbitrage. There will be somebody else. He, he makes a fifty to hundred thousand dollars a month driving for dollars. Will be him teaching a class. I have another one. He trains acquisition teams around the country doing virtual. He make over six figures a month. And this successful story of students. So what better than to learn from other people that are there? So you don't say, oh, she's been doing it for thirty years. You know, she is easy. Or what if somebody just started last year and now they're making already six figures a month? That's the type of caliber people I bring in. Yeah, no, it's amazing. Um, I urge you, if you're interested in learning any of the strategies that Laura and I have spoken about today, check out our website. We're going to have it in the show notes. We're going to show you how to get in touch with her. And like Laura said, you know, if you haven't been doing it thir from, for 30 years or, you know, 20, 20 some years like me, learn from those that have so you can shortcut your path to success. Laura, thank you so much for sharing your story and all these resources with um, our audience today. Yeah, thanks for having me and everybody here. Just go out there and do it. Make it happen, okay? Make it happen. I love it. Hey, Chris here again. I hope you found this episode valuable. Now, I have one more thing to gift you. We have a page for my coaching clients where you can get a free copy of my book, as well as much more from previous guests on the show. Just check out nextlevelincome.com slash coaching to get a free copy of my book, audiobook, and much more. I'll send you a copy of my book and cover all the shipping costs as a thank you for listening to the podcast. Also, please like, share, and take just 90 seconds to give us a rating on Apple Podcasts.